Mr. Speaker, today is National Indigenous Peoples Day. It should be a day of celebration of culture and history, but I am filled with a tremendous amount of sadness and anger. When this institution talks about Indigenous communities, we often talk about resiliency. The federal institution talks about their record-breaking investments when a quarter to five dollars is a slap in the face. This place pats themselves on the back while denying Inuit access to safe, livable space that keeps them alive. I will continue to say this, Mr. Speaker. There is nothing, nothing to be proud of for Indigenous peoples in this institution. There is nothing for anyone to be patting themselves on the back. In fact, you should all feel extreme shame. I feel shame that Inuit are continuously being denied the right to live, the right to self-determination. Today, I applaud Inuit and Indigenous peoples. Without ourselves, our strength, and our resilience, we wouldn't be here. Matna, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Member for North Island Powell River. Mr. Speaker, as the number rises of Indigenous children found in unmarked graves in Canada, this government is continuing to re-traumatize Indigenous families. A human rights tribunal found that the government discriminated against First Nations kids, and instead of making it right, the government keeps fighting these kids in court. This isn't a collaborative process, Mr. Speaker. The government is taking Indigenous kids to court. Since the last time I asked the minister, the government has been in court for another week. So I'll ask again, when will the government stop fighting First Nations kids in court? Honourable Minister. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I think it's important to be clear to all Canadians and Parliament that as part of this process, uh, not a single child has had to testify. Uh, there are competing class actions that um, require us to look at this process as a whole. We are currently in confidential discussions with parties, uh, and those will remain confidential. But let me be clear once again, every single First Nations child that has been discriminated by the broken child welfare system will be fairly, justly, and equitably compensated. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in 2007, the Conservative government chose to vote against the adoption of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. In the years since, Indigenous parliamentarians, including Romeo Saganash and I, amongst others, have worked diligently to rectify this mistake, resulting in our government's tabling and passing of C-15. On National Indigenous Peoples Day, could the Minister of Justice please update the House on C-15 and the work ahead to implement UNDRIP? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the member from Sydney, Victoria, for his important question on National Indigenous Peoples Day, for his advocacy and his efforts in helping us to get to this momentum, momentous landmark. And I, I would also like to salute and thank his father, Prof. Professor Sakish Henderson, for all the work that he did in the development of the Declaration. The UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples passing in both chambers is an important step on the path towards reconciliation. It is not, however, the last one, Mr. Speaker. The real work begins once the declaration is adopted. We will continue to work with Indigenous peoples across Canada, support the co-development of an action plan, implementing and achieving the objectives of the declaration. Mr. Speaker, we're building a better country for all our children and grandchildren. 